What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and we'll have a look at CDS option sets again. This time we are looking in the list records action. So if you watched my previous videos on how we can get option set labels from, um, from the triggers and from the jet records, list records is much the same, but it's going to be slightly different because we're dealing with a list and not just a individual value. So I'm going to go through that today. For those of you that, are not, that aren't familiar with option sets inside CDS, CDS uses labels and integer values to create an option set. So when you create an option set, you put in your label of like, you know, uh, red, yellow, green, blue. But what you do in the background is that is assigned an integer value. And usually what you do in terms of like integrations and stuff like that is you map to those integer values and not the labels. And that's kind of how CDS or Dynamics understands it. And that's how things work. But when we are using Power Automate, what we don't want to do is we don't want to just pull out those integer values because they're not going to mean anything to us. So what we need to do instead is we go, right, okay, um, we want um, this, we want these things, and we want the, the option set labels. We don't want the um, we don't want the values behind it. So as I said, I've covered uh, the triggers uh, and the get record action in a previous video. This time I'm going to use list items, which is going to be slightly different. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate. I have a manual trigger flow here, which is just triggering from a button because that's all I really need. And then I can click on new step and go to common data service, uh, find the current environment connector, and then go down to list records. From here, it's asking me my entity name. Uh, I'm going to use contact because I know I've got some good option sets on contact at the moment. And then for my uh, for my query, I'm not actually going to bring, uh, I'm not going to filter it at all. Uh, I'm just going to say, right, I just want to bring about five records. Um, and that's all we're going to do. Now, if I trigger this, it's going to run, it's going to get all the, all the, the direct content and everything, uh, and that'd be great, uh, but that's not what we're going to be able to use. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to insert a HTML table. Uh, the other one. Um, and we're going to say, right, okay, we're going to get the HTML table from uh, this, from the, the, the body or the values that are coming back from the list records action. And we're going to specify the columns. So uh, on contact, we've got uh, marital status, uh, marital status, um, and we'll go and find that piece of data our content. Uh, marital, yeah, there we go. Marital status. We also have preferred contact method. Uh, preferred, preferred contact method can't spell because you're watching me um, and again we'll, we'll pull that back as well uh, preferred uh, method of contact so we've got those two those two values in here um, and these are what we're going to return so we'll we'll click on test and we'll sh we'll see what this returns us in the first instance click test uh, I'll run the flow run flow, click done, and then it's going to run off. It's going to run off and it's going to return these things. So as we can see, uh, one of them has a marital status um, and a lot of them have contact methods, uh, but no other data. So that's not exactly what we want to use. So if I click on edit here, um, it's annoying that I can't, can I not move these things around? That's a bit annoying, isn't it? I'll move my move my headers around, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll choose, we'll get a first name, and we'll put that in there as well. First name. Um, right, we'll do that. Just so we can see um, who's who's related to. So, um, so what we're going to do is we need to get the we need to get some data about these uh, about these fields out so we can look at it. Now I know the data re is returned. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a compose action here and then in the direct content I'm going to put the body. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm just going to go off and get those label values. Now if you try to expand list records you'll just see a link to click and download and it, it comes out but it's just not very neat. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just test this again 
um, and we've put the body into a compose action now and I can just copy that, uh, that JSON, um, JSON body straight out of that array that we are looking for. So flow run successfully, that's good. And in here, uh, oh, that's great. Uh, it's not giving me what I wanted. I think I've used the wrong field there. We can see like list records here just says click to download. So uh, it's not great. I want the value. Don't want the value. Let's try with the value. Value seems like a good thing to try. Um, and we'll run this again. I think it's actually body items I want. Uh, Click run that run. Yeah, no, that didn't work either. Uh, body value items. Ah, okay. So now it's putting a reply to each round. This didn't happen in my testing. That's uh, an interesting, interesting thing to know. So that's because it's going to loop through those individual uh, bodies. Um, I may just have to cheat and just tell you the answer. Um, but I wanted to try and show you the, the JSON properly. Um, but it's not playing ball today. Uh, right. There we go. So we do get this body out and that's all we want. So I'm just trying to open up plus. Here's what I did earlier. Uh, I want to paste that in and then we can see. So what this is, is this is an individual record. So this isn't the full body, which is actually what I wanted originally. This is just the uh, full record. It, it's possibly because I was running on too many fields um, and it was just saying, yeah, just click to download it. So what we want to search for is marital. Uh, no, I want a preferred. Uh, no, preferred, uh, preferred contact method. So if you watch my last video on the debt records, you'll know that this is what we're looking for. So the preferred contact method um at o data dis, uh, display v1 formatted value so this is the label that is associated with this field here and this integer value so what we're going to do is we're going to use this in our table now i'm pretty sure marital uh mar mar is it just that i can't spell today is that all it is Go back to our, our table, marital status. I think that's the right one. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, family status code. That's why I can't find it. Because it's family status code. Don't you love how labels. Um, it can't find that in here. That's interesting. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's here. If it's returning a value, then it will be here. Uh, but yeah, don't you love it how sometimes labels and, and things are just not uh, not as you would expect. Ah, uh, well, we won't spend loads of time looking for that. We might just be able to use it anyway. So, um, so yeah, that's what we want. We want um, the third contact method at um, Preferred contact method at OData, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do here is contact method label. And in here is where we need, now need to write an expression. So if you hover over one of the other, um, one of the other statuses in here, one of the other pieces of data and content, you can actually see that the code is item brackets, um, question mark, and then the, the field name. So previously when we've used this, we've used trigger body or we've used body to actually get those fields out. This is using item by default when we're putting the direct content in because Flow knows that, hey, you're sending me an array. What I actually want is I want the item in that array and then we're going to pull that out. So that's what we're going to, uh, well, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to um, try and insert an, um, an expression We'll say item, uh, we'll open and close brackets, we'll do a question mark, and then we will um, create some new brackets, uh, and then we will a single quotation mark, and then what we want to do is we want to do a field. So if I go back to here and do preferred, uh, can't find that one now, preferred contact method, there it is. Do preferred contact method, O data. Uh, formatted value v1 and that's what we're going to paste into here 
So we put that in there and then we can hit escape and then we see the item goes in there and we will test this out. So we'll click on test, save a test. And we'll run the flow and the flow is running and hopefully it'll success, succeed. Succeeded, yay. Um, we didn't really need this stuff anymore. Uh, and we can now see here, so we've got five records, Hal, Dick, Bruce, Wally, um, blank, uh, and we can see their different contact methods, and we can see the contact method matching against um, the, the integer value behind it. Now, I do wonder where the marital status is, is in there, so what we'll do, just to see, um, test label, just to see if it is, uh, I don't know if it is or not, uh, what we will do is we will uh, take Family status code um, is what it is. Um, and we will go item brackets question mark. Uh, and then we'll do family status code. Uh, and then we will copy that in because it, it should be the same. Family status code. Uh, O data um, I think it's to be lowercase family status code at O data uh, family status code yeah we'll see if this works we'll just do it I can't find it in the J in the in the JSON before but we'll see if it's there um, if it's not oh well um, but at least we can get uh, one of the things out um, I just can't see it which is the weird thing but I can't see it I can't see the integer value either so oh there it is so it is there I just tried, I must have missed it when I was trying to type something in or maybe called something else. But yeah, there we go. So um, so the important bit in all of this is that you're passing in an array. Because you're passing in an array, you need to use the item and not body and not trigger body. Now, you don't need to specify which uh, loop that you're in or which array that you're in um, because we are just, because it, it inherently knows that by the value that we're passing in. So we're passing in a value to this this uh, this table, uh, this HTML table, so it knows that that is an array, and therefore it knows which loop we are talking about when we talk about items. So we use the item, then uh, open the parentheses and close the parentheses, put the question mark in because it's a um, a, a value that can or cannot contain data, which is fine, and then we put in the name of the field, and then have this at o data community uh, display v one formatted value and that gives you the label back so right now i can put all these into a html table embed the html table into you know a, a document or an email or something else and send that out and it's just a little bit neater so this is really handy when you want to again pull back a list of values pull back a list of records and actually have those labels in here um, it saves you from creating anything like trying to um, look up against the, the string map uh, table and pull back the values, which is the, old, the other way you can do this. Um, or, you know, having a, a complex if statement. So if this value equals one, write this variable and this variable is what we're going to put in the table. This allows you to just get it from the data that's coming back. So this is really, really, really useful. Um, I use this all the time, especially when I need to send emails or do other things. Um, but as always, I want to know what you guys use this for. So did you know that this existed? If you did, great. What do you use it for? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you like this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that'd be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time.